All right, loading up the Jeep here, and we're going to be heading to Sugarloaf Mountain to do some hiking this morning, and we'll take you along for the ride. All right, well, we made it here. I'm gonna let Luther out. He's gonna come flying out like a rocket, probably. Here we go. There he goes. <laughs> All right, he gets really excited when we, he gets real excited when we go hiking. So, should be a good hike, hopefully. All right, we're uh, part way up the mountain. It's, I think, about 1,800 feet that we have to go up. And uh, you can't really get a good feel for how steep it is up here, but it's, it's steep. And uh, didn't figure on, I would do a video much shooting going up the hill here because panting and wheezing and everything else. <laughs> uh, but I'm gonna go up here and show you something rather interesting that, um, had to be left over from the flood in the days of Noah. I don't see any other possibility for this. Um, but you can tell, if you look over this way, we go over here, you can tell through the tree line, you can see a lot of sky over here, which means we're getting above the tree line. So we're heading up the peak right now. 
of this uh, Sugarloaf Mountain. Yeah, it's kind of weird though. I mean, looking all around me here, and maybe it's brown sugar, I don't know. I don't see any white sugar up here. So how can it be Sugarloaf Mountain if there's no sugar? Hmm. Actually, there is sugar. That's not, uh, I wasn't being entirely accurate here. Uh, yeah, right here. This is the sugar on Sugarloaf Mountain. So that's a tree. No, actually it's a sugar maple. Acer saccharum, if you want the Latin. And right there, you can tap that and you can get sugar. See? There's your Sugarloaf Mountain. <laughs> There's a lot of maples up in here. But I have to show you this. Quite impressive landmark up here. Uh, here we are. Look at this. Now how did these, whoop, lots of sunlight. How did these big rocks get up here? Hmm. If the uh, earth is uh, billions of years old and the mountains were a process of slow trees dying and building up and trees dying and building up and lots of sediment and everything else, then how did these rocks get here? Hmm. Well, the Bible says that there was a flood in the days of Noah and that uh, the whole earth, even the highest point, including this mountain, would have been covered in water. And uh, those little rocks would have been like little ping pong balls in a, in a giant swimming pool or a giant lake or something, or the ocean. <laughs> um, so that's how they got here. Evidence of the flood. See if it's millions and billions of years of sediment laying down on top of it, you wouldn't have these giant rocks like this one. Another big one right there, right there. Fascinating. Uh, the earth is not billions of years old. The earth is a few thousand years old. Definitely uh, an interesting thing. And uh, it wasn't some kind of a, the flood in the days of Noah was not some sort of a bad weather event. And God warned whoa, Noah about it. No, um, God destroyed the world because of the wickedness of man. So, but, uh, and I'm sure the evolutionary goofballs have some kind of an explanation. They spend their time in nothing else but to come up with explanations to explain away the existence of God. When the Bible plainly says in the book of Romans, chapter 1, that uh, the invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. I quote that verse a lot, because it's very important. I'll show you some more rocks here as we continue up the trail. Oh, very interesting. See, boys and girls, uh, the reality is that we are the product of billions of years of death and suffering. And these aren't actually rocks. No, these are actually um, single cell amoebas, amoebas, amoeba, amoebas, bacteria, and simple life. And they formed, they all died by the, just billions and billions of them, they died and they, and they compressed and they formed into rocks. And they just, more death. Death and destruction is the savior of evolution. And then they have the nerve to say, to attack God. Because God does things that they don't understand. Funny how that works. So, but uh, down there at my feet, you can see the bluebell lily. I think it's called Bluebell Lily, yeah. Um, leveling off a little bit now. So I can catch my breath again. I'll tell you what, there's a, a lot of trees that came down. And you can see where the guy saws them with a chainsaw. Right over there. Can't point to it, right there. 
got to be uh, in pretty good shape to carry a chainsaw up that. <laughs> so my hat's off to you, whoever you are that keeps the trail cleared. Um, pretty impressive. So I decided I wasn't going to film a whole lot walking in, you know, get till we get to the top of the mountain. Uh, but I had to just pull the camera out for that back there. So I'll be back with you here when we get to the top. Well, we're not at the top yet, <laughs> but we're, I think, getting closer. The rocks are getting bigger and uh, it's getting very steep. So, uh, very good workout this morning. Man, I feel like a Christian in the Pilgrim's Progress. Or uh, there's a little book that you can get, Dangerous Journey. And um, some really neat art in it. And I'll let you see what I'm coming up here. Climbing up this stuff here now. And um, now it gets tricky. But I remember the one thing where he goes up the hill difficulty and he says about how that he went from walking or maybe running to walking and then from walking to crawling, crawling to climbing. <laughs> and it's kind of a, yeah, we're kind of sort of getting there now. Um, you can see here the trail ahead of me. Um, probably should not try to take video and climb here. Probably gonna, you know what, I'm gonna have to shut the camera down. There's no way I'm getting up this with just one hand and a camera. So, be back with you here in a little bit. All right, we're getting up there. I can see out through the trees, I can see the tops of other hills below us. And uh, there's the trail heading down that way. Uh, let me go over here. I just saw a little bit of a pleasant thing here. A little bit of food for the weary traveler. Down here, let me do it this way. Down here we have bunch berries. Right there, these are bunch berries. So, completely edible. They're not, uh, not like a strawberry or blueberry or something, but it gives you some moisture in your mouth. So, continuing on. More big rocks here to the side. Like that. Little seed there in that thing. I don't remember if it's safe to eat that or not, but all right, we're almost at the pinnacle here, I can see. So I guess I'll just continue. Oh. Definitely a good hike. No question about that. Oh wow. Oh boy, do I have a scene for you. Whew. Man. Let me get over here so you can see this. This is amazing. Luther, get away from the edge. Got some blueberries. Good, praise the Lord. Look at that. Way out there. A little bit hazy today but not bad, but we're not even at the pinnacle yet. So, but um, you can see down off the edge there, it's down pretty steep. The big mountain over there that you see over that way, see if I can point to it right there. That one is, uh, that's Mount Katahdin. I can recognize that mountain. I know that one well. 
Mal Chase, I think, is over here. Um, but, uh, you know, a lot of people, they'll say, well, you know, how did you get to move out to a place like that? Uh, by doing it. That's how we moved out here. Making a decision. Here's a wild blueberry. Let me get that. Little wild blueberry. Very difficult to see it. Come on. Oh well, right there. Thank you, Lord. So, pretty, pretty amazing. Seeing all of that. Looking out there, you can see some clearings and some lakes and whatnot. Very neat. Someday we're going to be climbing Mount Katahdin. Just difficult because you can't take dogs back there, so I have to figure out what to do with our dog Luther for a whole day. Build an outdoor pen for him or kennel or something. But someday we'll do it. We did climb Mount Chase over there which is actually higher than this mountain. And um, I did a couple sermons from the top of Mount Chase. And um, that was years ago when Oliver was three years old. <laughs> Climbed it. So, but now we have even steeper rocks going up. So I definitely need to shut it down and, and uh, put it in my pack here, my bag. So we'll be back with you here in a little bit. Here's the little brass marker at the very top. Here's my feet. And out there's a lake. Way out there. Sorry if there's wind noise. Top of the mountain is always windy. all the different mountains. Again, way over there is Mount Katahdin, the tallest mountain in Maine. Very beautiful up here. All right, I'm gonna walk around a little bit up here. Walk from rock to rock. I always liked walking around on top of mountains. And uh, <clears throat> I remember people years ago said that I just use green screens. I don't actually go outside. So keep that in mind. All right, this is all just a green screen up here. I'm not actually on top of a mountain. Um, it's all fake. Just a special effects studio that I, you know, spent millions of dollars on, okay? <laughs> yeah, doesn't make sense. But when have people made sense that have hated this ministry? Not very often. But, um... I guess I'm just going to stick with this video here and uh, just kind of as a way to show all of this because it's really beautiful. But I'll bring up some subjects in another video. Ugh. Okay. Try not to slip here. Always challenging when you have a camera on. But I can do another video over here, I think. But just. Love to get out here in God's creation like this and see everything. And down there's a river flowing. Let's see if I can show this. You can see the river down there. Way out there is a lake. Way out there. Like that. First time up here. We've been to Mount Chase, like I said earlier, but uh, this is the first time on Sugarloaf Mountain. Really amazing, really neat. So, might shoot a little bit of video going back down, but uh, definitely well worth the, the hike to get up here. So that will be it. And I'll uh, see a little bit here going that back down, I guess. But um, just really enjoyed the, wake, the walk today. Wake. <laughs> So, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed seeing the beautiful scenery up here. It's just amazing. Um, Northern Maine is a beautiful place. And uh, I 
come out here and you remember how God is in control of things. And you don't have to worry about uh, all the sins and everything else of this world. How man messes things up. Thankfully nobody's messed this up yet. This is an untouched area. Uh, except for the trail. I enjoyed the trail though. So, But you know we could work our way up here without a trail. So but that will be it. Like I said, I'll see you later as we're going back down. All right, heading back down the trail here. As the sun's coming up, I'm not even sure what time it is. Let me check real quick. Get my watch out. It is quarter till nine. And I'm um, heading back down to the Jeep. I'm gonna have to drive out of here. Noticing some. Yeah, this is big tree right here is a hemlock, eastern hemlock. Years ago they had a, down in Pennsylvania, they had a woolly aldigid bug that was really killing the hemlocks. It's a shame because hemlock, eastern hemlock is a very good wood. A lot of the old timber framers used it for big beams and houses and barns and things. So, but uh, what an amazing hike. I'm still very much blown away by those the scenery up on top, absolutely beautiful, really neat to see. So the interesting thing about hiking like this, you use your legs to get up to the top and take some energy and on the way back down your knees get a little shaky sometimes. <laughs> we do a lot of hiking but you know we're not perfect. Hey. Uh, little junco there, little gray and white bird, it's called a junco. He's just right there, trying to keep his attention, but I guess he didn't want to be around me. So, <laughs> um, I just want to say a few things here as I'm hiking down the trail. Some important things for you to remember out there. Um, and that is that, uh, if you are wondering about any kind of study that I've done, have you ever done a study on this or that or whatever it would be, whatever questions you might have, um, you can go to my channel, the main channel page, to the search thing there, and you can type in a search. Something about, you know, you hear something stupid like the Apostle Paul was a false prophet or something, and you can go and you can type that in. You know, Paul, false apostle, or something like that, just some keywords, and that will get you to the study Ugh. have to get down that kind of a rocky thing there um, I'll go as long as I can here um, with this but, um, but I think a lot of people don't seem to use the search thing on my channel some of you do but I know some people aren't maybe aren't real tech savvy or whatever and they they just they're not sure how to find other studies um, so that's how you find them. And of course you can always ask, put it in the comments section, have you ever done a study on this or that or whatever? And you'll get other brethren that um, can answer those questions for you. I'll have to point out something here real quickly. Um, you can see here that these rocks are layers. Now if this rock here, this mountain, formed by you know millions and billions of years of evolution slow evolution building up sediments then why are these rock layers going that way not they're not uh, horizontal in other words is what i'm saying um kind of odd how does the ground stack up like this you know this way when the mountain's going this way hmm almost as if there was a a lot of mud and things piled up and then it shifted and moved over and things during the flood in the days of Noah. Yeah, almost. Uh, we don't have any proof that the Bible's real. It's just an old Stone Age book and whatever else. Uh, you don't have proof because you're not looking for it. You're going out and you're looking for ways to disprove the Bible. And you can certainly look to organized religion to prove that the Bible is 
to try to attack the Bible. That doesn't really prove the Bible's wrong because organized religion is condemned by Scripture. <laughs> so, uh, try to get through to people. Um, do what I can to get out there and get the gospel to people in unique ways, ways that people are not familiar with. It's a tricky thing going down these rocks. Ah. So have to kind of hold on to trees as you're going down through. But that's what makes it fun. If it was easy, there'd be too many people out here. And I wouldn't want to come here. Let's just say it that way. Whoa. So, I know a lot of you concern yourself with my, uh, whether or not I'm in shape or whatever else. And uh, do you ever do, what kind of exercise do you do and whatever? Do you stay in good shape while you're looking at it? Just one of the many things that we do. Um, Off-grid homesteading. Uh, I do a lot of that stuff. Hauling a lot of water jugs. Coming out here, and I've, I'm wearing a lot of weight right now, by the way, too. Um, I'll say it this way. Uh, three different ways to defend myself. And, uh, you know, seed dispensers and quite a few uh, freedom seeds as well. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying there. So, I'm not just coming out here without any weight and whatever else. This is an interesting little obstacle here. Have some roots of this big tree to walk through. Pretty neat looking. Ugh. Hearing some birds around, but not like at my property. Uh, I guess the birds love me there. Um, more so than here, <laughs> I guess. But uh, really beautiful out here today. Noticing a lot of hemlock trees, actually. Areas like this, they can be protected many times. So there's some, still some, yeah, it looks like that's another... Hemlock, eastern hemlock there, big tree. Um, but a lot of the forests up here are fir, Douglas fir and spruce, different types of spruce, but uh, it's nice to see a hemlock forest. And they all smell really wonderful. Um, you just want to breathe in, you know, get some more uh, stuff here, to, or more fresh air. There's a bird on the trail. He's right over there walking. I don't know if you can see him or not. Making that noise helps the birds. It kind of makes them curious and they'll fly. And usually works good with black capped chickadees. Other birds, not so much so. Black cap chickadees are curious little guys. So, I'm getting left behind here. They're getting ahead of me. I better pick up the pace here a little bit. Um, but you know, I want to make a, another mention of something here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do anything else with this whole Trump uh, situation, the assassination attempt. And all of that. Um, but I want to clarify a couple of points just to get it out there because some of these Trump people, uh, they're American, yeah, USA, USA. And if something happens that they don't like, they start to get very un American. What am I talk talking about? I've seen some of these guys saying that people that question the official story should have their citizenship revoked. I'm not joking. And uh, I've seen that out there being floated around. If you say that uh, Trump faked the whole thing or something, then you should be kicked out of America. Um, I thought America had freedom of speech. I thought America was based on people having free thoughts. Hmm. Kind of weird. But all of a sudden now, no, we, we can't have anybody asking questions because they... The official story doesn't make any sense. 
we can't do that. Now we have to have um, we have to have people silenced that we don't like uh, different views that are, that we find objectionable. We have to have those people. We need to shut them up. That's what worries me. And again, you know, uh, I've had people. They say, I say, I think that the thing was faked. They say, oh, I guess the people. What about the people who were injured and the guy that died in the crowd? I didn't say it was all faked. What I'm saying is the thing of Trump, just from a scientific, logical perspective, how do you have a bullet go through the guy's ear and do no other damage? Just hit the ear. The odds of that happening are so slim as to be absurd. And if that's all that went wrong with the whole story, well, you know, you can kind of make excuses for it. But the fact is that it wasn't just that. You have all the security failures. Why did the Secret Service intentionally let the thing happen? And that's what it was. The, and, and the police. Why? Why? Are they all part of the inside job, the false flag operation? Um, were they all in on it? Was it the liberals that planned it? The Biden regime? Or was it the Trump regime? Who did it? Who's responsible for this whole thing? Asking questions. You know, there's obviously something going on. You don't just have this situation where the shooter's just walking around with a rangefinder for a while and, hey, you know, we'll check him out and we'll just keep an eye on this guy, don't worry. And then, you know, uh, he's up crawling up on top of the roof and they say, oh, well, there's a bad guy up there on top of the roof. And a police officer goes over and starts to climb the ladder and, you know, and, oh, uh, he pointed a gun at me so I had to come back down again. You know, I mean, the whole thing, I guess technically it's possible because of how politically correct people are in this country. Technically, I guess it could have happened the way that the media is kind of reporting it. But it just leaves a lot of questions that are unanswered for me. You know, so just to clear it up, I have never said that nobody was shot and that there were no real bullets fired. I didn't say that. I just simply said the ballistics of... A 5.56 round being shot at 130 yards going th straight through a guy's ear um, because he turned his head a certain way and whatever else. Um, uh, I have questions. I have questions about that. Now the spiritual realm could certainly pull off things like that. Certainly. There could be some scheming going on behind the scenes, so to speak, with the spiritual realm. I don't doubt that. I don't question that. But um, physically, to plan that thing, that kind of an operation, and oh, it was just a, it was a shot that the guy took, but he missed, he messed up. Well, um, I don't know, I don't know, I have questions. Um, and that's okay, I should be asking questions. People should be allowed to think about the whole thing and say, hey, yeah, there's some weird things, some questions I have that are not being answered and whatever. But um, another thing I want to talk about is one of my recent videos I compared um, Trump and his followers basically to the Nazi party. Now, that's something old that the liberal news media, they keep doing this and they're demonizing Trump. Well, um, again, is it people, you know, what you're going to cause a, a violent reaction or something by demonizing somebody? Uh, well... Um, I understand some of that, but you have to, again, you have to be careful of that. Um, the reason I am saying that there's a danger there with this radical Trump stuff is because you have people that are saying, you know, anybody that questions the official story should be deported. Well, see, that's dangerous. That's very dangerous. It should not be that way. You should be allowed to question and say, hey, you know what? There's some things here that I don't know about. And I'd like to have some answers. And when you have people that just are, no, you know, and they're waving their flags and they're, they're not even thinking, you know, they're not even asking the questions. Hey, you know what? Is Donald Trump really a friend of America? Has this guy really helped America? You know, he's going to make America great again. How? How's he going to do that? Is he going to bring in more printing of money, thereby hyperinflating our currency? Um... 
you know, oh boy, we can just barely afford to live and whatever else. It's all Biden's fault. Uh, it's not Biden's fault. Biden is not, I mean, he just continued the program, but uh, it was Trump that did quantitative easing during 2020. It was Trump that locked people into their homes. Trump that shut down businesses. Um, it was the Trump regime with all of his little Jesuit buddies like Fauci and Redfield and um, Bannon and and uh, Trump's two sons are both Jesuit educated. Trump is Jesuit educated. And these guys, um, they were all the ones that were taking away our freedoms. So, oh, you know, we have to bring Trump back in. Oh, uh, you know, what other choice do we have? Well, we weren't given another choice. That's the whole point. That's why America's in serious trouble because we were not given other choices. We were just told, here's what you're going to have, period. Um, again, like I was doing my one video up top there, the thing of the rule of law. Um, there needs to be laws. There needs to be, you know, we didn't have that many problems back when re both Republicans and Democrats followed the law, when they respected the law and upheld the law. But then it became this thing of, let's uh, be bought out by corporations, Big Pharma being one of them, and, um, We'll, we're for sale to the highest bidder and we'll sell American politics and you can donate and, and I'll make sure that you get your uh, your agenda through if you donate enough money to my campaign and then we'll uh, you know the military industrial complex we'll um, get our good buddies over at Lockheed Martin and whatever and we'll send outdated weaponry over to Ukraine Instead of scrapping it here, we'll just get it scrapped over there. You know, the whole thing. It's all a scam. Um, just sickening. And I'm really feeling it in my knees. Whew. That was a rough hike. Might have to be carried back to the vehicle. No. <laughs> no. Um, I come out here to put down the flesh. To punish my body so to speak, bring it into subjection. Um, so right now my knees hurt really bad, but it doesn't matter. Just keep going. There's a, some good spring water at the Jeep waiting for me. And a nice drive to the office where I can get some breakfast. Or by the time we get there, it'll probably be lunch time. But that's okay. Intermittent fasting is good for you. Very good for you. Important to do. But my battery's starting to die here, so it's getting down there pretty low. I don't want the video to just cut out, so hopefully you've enjoyed our hike today. Kind of, I know some of you have expressed that it's sort of like being with us because it's kind of as if you're there walking along beside me, or in this case, you'd be walking backwards down the hill, which I would not recommend. <laughs> but, um, I'll be bringing out some other stuff in the future here. A uh, bunch of different videos to get done. So that is going to be it. I am done recording. Um, so thank you very much for watching. Check out the videos I have linked here at the end if you want to understand more about the Bible. Thank you for watching.